Nice, what? Rob. What? No, Rob what? just totally made a face at you. I was like, he did. He's, he's, three episodes. He's, he's jealous <laughs> of the <laughs> stash. <laughs> I can't grow anything. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to the Heroes World Quarantine Podcast. I am your host, Stu Pei. And with me, as always, as the owners and proprietors of the Heroes World store in Markham, Ontario. That'd be John and Andre. Please say hello. Hello, what everybody. Up, folks? And with us is the resident oh, Prince of Mischief, the man who is upset that I've watched Ted Lasso, and <laughs> the man who is upset of the Seth Bullock mustache, Mr. Rob Goodet. Hey, what's going on, guys? Jo- John, how- what? Yeah, I got no, like I my. Say- Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really annoyed. So today I got, John, I got my WD-40. Can you please spray the chair? <laughs> you want me to? Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, because, John, this better work, man. Cause I'm I'm annoyed. Hang on a second. The, the question is, does Rob know how to use a can of WD-40? So he Rob does. has whipped out he a does. can of he WD-40, does. and he's gonna pre- attempt to lubricate his uh, noisiest chair in the history of podcasting. Oh my god! Um, it made it a whole new, like a better no. chair. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't squeak. You're right, John. Why didn't I use that WD-40 yeah. beforehand? Okay, this, it's, folks, it's, this, this, this is the difference between a, yeah. a $10 solution and a freaking $200 plus dollar solution. Rob has just came out with a brand new gaming chair. This, this is, That's this probably is a $600 kind of like, solution. Kind of like WandaVision <laughs> where he just used some magic to fix stuff. That's a really great segue, Rob. I appreciate it because as we move on to oh. our topic, which is WandaVision episode three. So here we go. As Rob has changed reality to make it less squeaky. Uh, I am going to you, Rob. Give hey, us- guys. Give us a synopsis of this episode without any positive or negative adjectives. Um, all right. So our uh, two heroes, Wanda Maximoff and The Vision, find themselves still stuck in an alternate reality. They are in the 70s, um, essentially mimicking the Brady Bunch, right down to the aesthetics of the Brady Bunch house, including the staircase, the front foyer entrance, um, and and still don't know why uh, they don't realize that they are in this made up world. Uh, as we left off at episode two, Wanda is pregnant with uh, well with babies, and as it turns out uh, throughout the episode, uh, she becomes very pregnant and then uh, becomes a mom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all the while, the fabric of reality starts to unravel. And perfect fabric of reality, of fabric of reality. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, and uh, and and Wanda makes a discovery about a uh, a current resident who we've seen in the last couple of episodes. Perfect. That it, we couldn't have we couldn't have planned it any better. As if John's reality is crumbling before him. So this is <laughs> Andre, just go with it. Don't 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 question. Don't question. No question. Rob, you missed you missed the. The crescendo of the episode. Well, it's you're not trying to spoil the episode. Oh, it's no, it's spoiler yeah, free. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. just well, that summary right. was, yeah, my bad. Yeah, my yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that that's for the aggregators out there that want to know what the episode's about without us spoiling the episode. So, there you go, people that want to you can snip at that and share with your friends. So, here we go. But we're going full spoilers right now and we're going into full details of the episode three of WandaVision, which is not titled, I think they title it afterwards because. There was nothing on the yeah. first time. So, Andre, give us your thoughts because I know you're chomping the bit to talk about the spoilers. Go ahead. What? Give us your thoughts and give us a spoiler. Uh, you know, um, while this show may end up being good, um, I, I think they've completely missed the mark and misjudged their their potential audience and stuff. This show is too damn slow, too damn boring. Uh, you know, for you to watch 22 minutes to get three minutes of some confusing thing at the end. Sure, I know where it potentially is going. I'm a comic guy, but talking to people who are watching the show, like and seeing the um, reactions online, people are like, no, I'm out three episodes. It's going nowhere. Don't care. Don't don't, uh, you know, you know, not going to give them any more time like they they have really, I think, missed the ball on it. Um, is it charming? I've said it before. Yes. Those two actors, Olsen and um, what's the vision? Mean, Paul Bettany. Uh, Paul Bettany. Amazing. Again, if Marvel wanted to, to, to flex their muscles, just make it a comedy. 
I would have killed for this first season to be six episodes set in Rip Van Winkle. Uh, next year's six episodes set in, you know, uh, Brady Bunch or whatever. It's, it's, they're charming to watch. It's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's nice to go down that memory lane. They're doing a good job on that. But this nonsense of putting in so many little spoilers, uh, not spoilers, Easter eggs and little nuggets that like I'm watching it with, with my wife. She's got no idea. It goes flies over her head and, and, and stuff like that. And it's just at this point for me, they're really taking what could have been super original and they're not flexing their original muscles. Like the end of this episode where, uh, you know, you, you, they pan out and it's like, Oh, look, they're in a dome city. And then, and, and then they're like, Oh, is this like the stand or whatever that Stephen King, uh, you know, TV show, the The dome dome and stuff like that. So like, like, Oh yeah, great. I guess. Yeah. Let's just reference and, and rip off other pop culture. Like at this point, I guess maybe I was expecting better from Marvel, and that's me. Like I, I know I'm really, you know, hard on Marvel and stuff like that. But they, I, they really could have done better with this. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much all I can say about it. Like it, honestly, if it wasn't for this podcast, I'm out. Right? Like honestly, it's it's too damn slow. They they need to make a 45 minute show. Have some of this comedy stuff going on, the flashbacks, the the, the, the other world stuff, but then segue other into what's going on on the outside in order for me to tie in and say, oh, yeah, I want to come back for that, you know, or they need to give me 22 minutes of 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 Elizabeth Olsen as Bewitched or I Dream, Dream of Genie. That's the only way they would keep me. Understood. Um, OK, do you. Looking at the show and and the way that the pacing, you don't you think that Marvel is just going too far the other direction, and that's why you feel that they are that it's not a coherent show. Is that they're taking too many chances with this? Thinking, well, you know, people always watch Marvel. It doesn't matter. Are they are they, are they going too far out of their their the zone? I one, Andre, I think honestly, I think there's part of that. I, I think they're they're because they're in first place and they're riding they think they can do no wrong but i really look at this show and what they're doing with the the marvel movie and television cinematic universe and i feel it's the exact problem that marvel has hit or comics have hit in general where they're relying too much on continuity Hmm. right who's gonna sit down and watch this boring ass thing in order to get to dr strange if if you have to because they're toting oh everything's interconnected you got to watch everything that's been the problem of comics you have you're like if you're not reading you know house of sword uh, house of x how do you get to, to ten of swords how do you get to what's going on here like there's just so much things like even even for dc right now you know if you didn't read uh death metal how do, how do you understand where they got to for for um, future state, right? There's so much continuity that they're building. And I think they're relying on super fans to be looking, oh, that's the sword symbol. Oh, that's the, you know, that's the this, the, the, the street address is this, the, this is that, you know? And like, listen, make something and make it entertaining, right? Oh. And that, that's what I keep saying. Yep. They could have done that. And like you mentioned in the first or last week's podcast, Oh, let's get the older generation to maybe watch and enjoy Marvel stuff. Man, they are going to be lost with all this other stuff. They're yeah. not watching super closely at stuff. So, yeah. yeah, a couple Easter eggs is great. You know, can you keep the, the big fans in? Yeah. But I, I really think this at this point now, they just thought, yeah, we can do this. We can do anything. And people are in it for the long haul. So let's give them eight episodes, but let's have the first three be be whatever we want it to be because you got to get there and they haven't they haven't even started to, getting to there. be fair andre it's not even first three it's first six that they're gonna be it's it's for us and then the rest are for you so it's but gonna be very interesting isn't it only eight episodes no it's it's oh ten. it's ten sorry my bad oh, my bad. i think they said it was a six hour uh, was it was oh, a six okay, hour, that's what I was maybe six hour event it. But I think that they were uh, the first six episodes are 22, and then the last ones are like hour epi- or bigger episodes to encompass because they're trying to f- copy the format of 22 minute episodes for the comedies, and then afterwards yeah. it gets much bigger and larger with bigger scale. So by the last couple episodes, it will be hour long episodes. But you're you're completely right, Andre. Who's gonna slog through all of that um, to get to that? Like 
one of the thing we always talk about for is that I don't want to watch, you know, 12 episodes and then it's going to get really good. Who has the time to even regardless of how amazing the show is, if it doesn't get you in the first episode, then even anyone will just be like, I'm out. Like it, it's hard to invest that much time now into something that isn't gravitating and, and pulling you in as of the first episode. So, and, and also like, you know, um, Disney, you know, kudos to them. They, they've made that little legends uh, yep. shirt and it, and it showed Wanda Maximoff. And I'm like, so I watched it. I had to watch it twice because I'm like, is this about Wanda Maximoff or is this just about the, the Avengers saga? No, no voiceover, no overlay, no, no description of, you know, like they, they, they needed a narrator for that thing because they literally just took all her scenes and it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't connect, you know, uh, it doesn't set up where, where the character kind of, is now well, they do have and, a watcher so I, I maybe they could use him yeah know, no to... they could but but that's the thing like if this is going to be a true primer for these characters in these other yep. shows, especially this show and and the thing is i remember saying this you know a long time ago um when when the, the movies were coming out i'm like uh in age of Ult- was it age of ultron wherever she touched the avengers and they all kind of went wonky and stuff yeah, like that's that. I age saying, of ultron, yeah. what are her powers in the mcu in the comics, I know, right? But this never one, explained. Yeah, yeah, she can do anything and everything. Yeah. And at this point, I'm like, she has got. She's better than Superman. She has no weakness. There's no kryptonite. There's no magic, right? Like, like for Superman, those are her weaknesses. This chick can do everything. And when her I watch heart those, is her weakness, huh? Her heart is her weakness. Her love of the vision. Well, yeah, but that's not a that, like. Listen, she can, she can use that as a strength. Uh, Andre, she, she can, can still be killed with a bullet because her brother was killed by a bullet. So her weaknesses well, is a gun. If Hawkeye, the, if, if Hawkeye takes her out in that dream sequence, yeah, right? punches her in the like, face. He uses yeah. his like senses and like takes her out, and he's like, "No, I've done that before, or whatever." Yeah. 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 Anyways, so, I'm just so saying, physical she's super violence. Powerful. Is what this, is, this is just crazy. It's like yeah, yeah it, it, you know. But to be fair, if if she was still stacked against anyone of the big seven from you know, DC, they would still crush her in a heartbeat. So Batman would well, take her up very I easily. I don't, I don't know. Like, again, rewatching that Legends thing, she stood toe-to-toe with Thanos. Yep. And it wasn't <laughs> until he triggered the power gem for Pete's sake. And if she was smart and had combat training and, and has stead, stayed out yep. of his reach, mm-hmm. she ends endgame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I, I, don't, I don't think she's fully developed. Like, I don't think she herself knows the extent of her powers. That's right, but, the sense that you get, right? But so. there's also the, you need to put a limitation on this. Like, she can fly. She can uh, telekinesis, telekinetics, shoot bolts. You know, fix broken uh, tape. Uh, you know, objects like like right. contain explosions. Like, it's just too but, much. It's like to be it's fair, like whatever they need for the movie, she can do. But that's, 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 that's also, crazy. that's that's a MacGuffin for everything, right? It's the same thing mm-hmm. with Batman in the DC universe. Batman can do anything in the comic books and he just doesn't. Not to, not to the same Bat God. I know but, what you're saying. But, I, but... Look, it, it's, I, I, I hear you. Like, again, I think in this pocket universe, she's doing stuff that maybe she can, maybe her powers are amplified and she's controlling the universe. Like, it's reality that she's changing right now. And maybe they'll push it back to one of the Infinity Stones and it, we'll, we'll wait and see. But I get what you're saying. It is yeah. a little too OP right now. But again, I don't know what the parameters of what how things work in that bubble universe because we've seen multiple times in multiple sci-fi shows when the person is in their domain, like Dormammu, you are stronger and you can do more things whether you're out of that pocket universe or not. So Andre, I want to ask you before we get to John and, and Rob, they did talk about Tommy. They did talk about uh, talk about both the sons, Tommy and Billy. Do you want to let people know, uh, because I wasn't going to ask John, because John probably is not going to tell me all the details, but can you give people the insight of who the twins are at this standpoint? Because there are, you know, multiple things out there, but who are, who is Bobby, or who is Tommy, and who is Billy? Okay, so I am not, do you, do you not know? completely current. I know the original origins of them, and... To the show's well, just credit, tell, them, tell us who they it, are and what their powers are, and then we'll go. Well, then you know we need to worry about origins. Well, like in a- in in current in the current. So, um, one of them has the powers like Scarlet Witch is known as Wiccan, and that's Tommy, right? It's Billy. Oh, Billy. Sorry, I was getting the Billy. names. So Billy is is Wiccan, and um, 
uh, yeah, he's he, like a, a magician like Scarlet Witch, or what? What her original powers or, or sources of magic? So I guess we'll see where where this is. Unfortunately, I don't remember um, the other the other uh, child's powers. So I'm going back. The last time the I the other really... guy's speed. Hmm. It's speed. It, it's speed. Which it's which silver? It's Quicksilver. No, but what where where what's uh because the last time I was really uh, was the original Vision and Scarlet Witch crossover that was or uh, limited series that one to me where they did all of this stuff with the two kids was fantastic. Well, uh, in Young and, Avengers, and, uh, and, when and, they introduced them, they they introduced Billy as as you mentioned Wiccan, and yeah. then uh, Tommy is Speed, which is basically the offshoot of Quicksilver, so he can run really quickly and he has the the. But they ability. haven't used him that much in it, right? He's around. He's, uh, but he's not. He's not a big player. Like, like I'm talking currently in in in, well, in like I, the I think, MCU, right? In, in the comics, not MCU. Well, MCUs, they've right? set Billy up because Billy, in terms of sense, is one. He's the power of Wanda. Two, he he loves Hulkling, and they are yeah. in a relationship in in a in a relationship together. So he is a a, a gay uh, superhero. And then three, they've also set him up to be the new Sorcerer Supreme. So yeah. it's already like in the future, he has now moved into the Sorcerer Supreme role. So he, he has a little more uh, like movement as to like anything. How much can you do with speed anyway? So it's like, oh, you're fast. But what storylines are you going <laughs> to hey, do outside of- don't knock the Flash. <laughs> yeah, but the Flash can do is a lot also- with speed. Yeah, but he's also, you talk about being OP in terms of the speed force. He can do anything he wants. Yeah. And anytime he wants to do anything, I'll vibrate through this. I'll tap in the speed force. And every one of his villains is a speed guy. Like you kind of at the point or mirror master. That's what you have to do is trickery. So I think there's a level of like, how much can you do with him? Yeah. And I think speed is a, is kind of like a trap in terms of power. It seems very cool, but you're limited in what you can do. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, th those are the, the characters for those people wondering at home. Um, okay. Uh, and then, yeah, Rob, what are your thoughts on the, the episode? Oh, well, listen, just to kind of quickly back off what you guys just said about the kids. I don't even know if they'll be relevant um, after the series is over. I, I think it will be. Still, I don't know if they'll still be around or not. Um, well, so I actually. No, go for it. I'll, I'll ask you a follow up question. Um, yeah. I actually quite enjoy. I enjoy the episode because I like what they they did. I mean, you know, you can go as as weird as the whole stork thing and how Wanda kept trying to change the stork and they use that 70s uh i dream of genie type of you know with the, the the very red cloud as opposed to her what we'd normally see with her powers right um so they went with a bit more of a practical effect on that um the aesthetic as i said in the summary before was was really good i like the mystery again this is like a tape tapestry, right? And in each episode, you're pulling some strings and you're seeing that stuff happening on the outside as evidenced by the neighbor who was, for whatever reason, was cutting through the wall with a hedge trimmer, which I, <laughs> I can tell you doesn't work because I've tried that. Um, uh, also, um, you know, Paul Bettany, again, you know, he, I find that Wanda's uh, voice is very much uh, Stepford wife like voice in the last three episodes uh, whereas he seems to be completely changing his character and his mannerisms so I, I, there is a bit of a distinctive uh, difference between each episode and how he's uh, portraying where I agree with Andre though is that you know, it's it's a lot we have obviously a friend of the show Scott he's like I'm done with, I, I can't handle this there's an expectation of of what you think that this show is going to be and you're asking the audience uh for a lot of patience to get there and um you know i just saw in the last couple of days um some headlines on some comic websites and stuff of like that where paul Bettany is like listen episode four is going to blow you away and kevin feige or, and the producer of the show are like just, when you get to episode four it's going to change the game like and it reminds me a lot of The Walking Dead in when every time they're coming back from a mid-season break, you know, you always have the actors going, this finale, this, um, you know, season premiere, this mid-break mid premiere is going to blow what happened before. Just stick with us. Like, there's a lot of stick with us, stick with it. And when you're, when you're dropping that, to me, that's always a red flag. When you're asking people, okay, we're recognizing that maybe we're, we're, we're pulling the taffy a bit too much uh, in these past three episodes and you're not liking it. And so we're, we're dropping you some hints, some, some cheese doodles just to kind of stick with us uh, until episode four. And that's, that's a big ask. 
and you have to, it has to pay off. And if it doesn't, you've lost people's trust. So I feel that there's a very fine balance. I respect what they're doing. I respect the, the idea. I respect that they're, and I said this last episode, we talked about this, they are committed to the bit. They are, they are completely mimicking a TV show from the seventies, right? Everything from, like I said before the aesthetic, but the comedy, the, you know, uh, the delivery of lines, the delivery of the babies. I mean, um, you know, yes, it's not going to be a modern delivery with like my son when I was watching and he was like, wow, that's a really clean baby. Well, that's what happened in the seventies and people had kids and TV shows. They came out and they looked like they were, you know, two months old. So that's the reality. That's how things happen. So I'm, I applaud them for, for adhering to that uh, level of, of um, they put themselves in a very fine box. And so I, I applaud them for sticking to that. Um, but Andre is right. Uh, Scott's right. And other people are right. If they're starting to show their frustration, you're, it, it's, it's, it's deserved because it is a lot. And so I think, you know, I talked about how my son and I, we've been watching um, Cobra Kai and we finished it and, that's a show that he's gone back and is rewatching again. We just finished it this week and he's rewatching it. This is not a show that he will rewatch. Now, I said this to Andre online. Uh, we were talking. I said, you know, when you get to Doctor Strange, sometimes people like myself or maybe even used to or you know, Andre and John, if you're going to go see a movie, a new MCU movie, you might watch the one that kind of came before it or a couple that that do a lead in. I don't know. At this point, these three episodes are... Uh, uh, they, they don't matter. If I'm going to go watch Doctor Strange next year in the theaters, these three do not do not require. I don't need to watch them to lead into it. Now, maybe the later episodes will. Yeah. Maybe the last two episodes will. Is I'll watch those last two episodes to lead in. But that means you got six to eight episodes that really are inconsequential to the Love, overall yeah. story. And so, mm -hmm. what's the point? So, I'm committed. Obviously, not because of this show. But I'm committed to watch it. Uh, I, I, I'm going to. I'm going to enjoy it for what it is, but there is a serious lack of, of a payoff at this point. And this is not a show. I think the week to week release really has harmed this show based on the structure and format that we're looking at. Yep. They're, they're pulling a full uh, Iron Man two on us. They're, they're really thinking that they can do no wrong, but that's, it's a great lesson for anyone to, to realize that you can't, you can't do it all because people will also say I'm, I'm out. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the rest of the shows, because if this is the way it's going, then maybe they make a, make alterations to it and maybe won't go too far or they release it all at once and do a different schedule. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. I, I'm still interested in seeing the other Marvel comedies, which I think at the end of the day, I think we can all agree the She-Hulk lawyer show. That's a half an hour comedy. I think it's going to be great because it is going to be very, to Andre's point, specialized. And it's just 12 half an hour comedies of her being a lawyer. At least that's consistent as opposed to this, which is starting in a very comedic way and then doing a hard pivot to science fiction. So we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, but you know what, those two, I think that we'll have to see how, I think Falcon and Winter Soldier is vastly different, and they've, it's six episodes that are close to an hour each, I think yep. it's going to be, what you see is what you get, there's not going to be this type of kind of wonky yep. format, I do worry though, that, you, you know, having these dedicated shows with these already pre-existing characters, or bringing these new ones, that's, uh, you know, I said this before, last year when we were talking about this, does it water down the brand, does it water down what you've committed to watching on, on film. And there is now some legitimate fears that they will start to lose the interest of individuals because they're just not gonna care about watching some of these things. And so if this doesn't stick the landing, She-Hulk is gonna be inconsequential to a lot of people to be very honest with you. I think there's gonna wait to binge all these things when they come out because yeah. what's the point? Yeah, I, I, I think they're just trying to appease stockholders and we'll see what happens. All right, uh, I'll, I'll get back. I'm going to hold my question, Rob, for you because I want to get to John, the person who was the least interested in the show, who was already off the boat, who has sailed away and has left us a note going, I have left for the island. <laughs> Wilson! Uh, he, has, he has left Rob to press the buttons and to put the code in as he is bounced. <laughs> so... Uh, as you wonder, Rob is Desmond, if you're wondering what's going on. <laughs> uh, John. Hello, brother. All right. Quick, <laughs> yes. Yes. Quick aside. You're, you're no we... longer on the sub. You're no longer on the ship. <laughs> John has left. Where? <laughs> John has gone yeah, so back like, home. Yeah. Before we get rolling, I feel like we're like a week or two away from uh, Stu really growing in this Tom Selleck mustache he's got going on. And 
we're sitting around like Chandler and uh, Joey going, do you use like a little tiny comb to, to, to brush it and stuff like that? Sorry, I just had to lead with that because that's way more interesting to me than, than this show at the moment. <laughs> Um, so let's go with the positives. Um, John with the like, like, like mentioned before, the high production value. It, it's a beautiful looking show. Um, very charming cast. Uh, I'm very glad that some people are really digging this. They're, they're digging it, dissecting it, posting uh, 10, 20 minute YouTube videos of Easter eggs, revealing that this person is named after this person that directed this thing or whatever, yep. things that I don't care about. But that's great that other people are enjoying that. Um, and I think that's fantastic. Um, so why why it doesn't work for me is it's it's 20 minutes of filler with a five minute payoff, which is worse, yeah. like the a worse ratio than any Saturday Night Live sketch I've ever seen. So it it every episode does feel like a Saturday Night Live sketch where it kind of like it's kind of trying to be funny. It's not kind of getting anywhere. It doesn't go like quite go there. And then it just kind of sometimes you get a good joke at the end sometimes it just falls flat. So to Rob's point, it's, it's great that they're throwing in all these homages, uh, Flamingo or uh, not Flamingo, whatever, Stork representing the baby, the quick baby, the photos spinning in the background. But they, like he's, like people say he, they're committing to this format. So kudos to them for doing something different. Um, but they're not, it's not, it's not an episode. Like I would, I would enjoy it more if they did an actual 20 minute episode um, that has a beginning, middle and plot instead of just these kind of, uh, 20 minutes of Easter eggs. Um, yeah. So like, it's like, and, and it's kind of like, oh, you got you to see the end. You got to wait till the end. And then that, that's, when it, that's when it all comes together. I'd be very surprised if the, if the first 20 minutes plus of these three episodes um, mean anything in the grand scheme of things. So Andre brought up the good point, the Age of Ultron movie, um, where Scarlet Witch sends all the characters onto a, a dream sequence and they, and they snap out of it. This is like, that five two minute scene from a movie expanded into so far three episodes, um, which uh, for me, uh, because I did like, and, and, and this is me going into it, watching the trailer, knowing I don't think I'm going to like this. So for me, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And le- unless you guys want me on here still, and I'll watch the last five minutes of every episode and report back five minutes before the credits, because the credits take like freaking eight to 10 minutes. Um, but it's, it's, I don't want to watch, um, Everyone says it's the the Brady Bunch, the whatever. I feel like it's 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 uh it's like Seinfeld. It's like a show about nothing, um, but but without the the great uh, Seinfeld characters joke. of Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's like uh, I I don't get it. It doesn't work for me. Um, I'm sorry it's a if show that hurts anyone's about feelings. About nothing, John. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what it is. A show but, about but nothing. But it's not really. But but they do a good comic comedic delivery of all those things. They don't just throw in Easter eggs. Uh, and, and hope that people uh, will dig this stuff. Like, I, 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 I like that snippet at the end. I'm like, well, look at the production value on these uh, Humvees and the Truman Show dome and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, that looks cool. I'll watch those clips after this is all done. So at, at, at this moment, I'm, I'm to quote one of my, my favorite dudes, uh, ejecto cito, cuz, uh, I'm out. <laughs> That's a Tyrese line for Fast and the Furious, Rob. <laughs> Yeah, and it, and it landed just as well as it did in that, that in the movie. Hey, I didn't have the props. <laughs> Should we be talking about Tyrese of the whole situation that's going on, John, right now with Tyrese? You you want you want to really go on that route, or because uh, it's, it's uh, he's not... he's doing better than a certain someone else right now. But... <laughs> so, Army Hammer, who, who may, Look at may how or may not come up later. Winners, <laughs> it may or not. But yeah, a, both, like shout out to everyone who likes it. Lil Zoo, Lil Zoo. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, he just has an affinity for barbecued ribs. What? Like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, shout out to anyone like who ribs. likes it. I'm glad you like it. Um, not for me, unfortunately. I don't. I don't um, get it. I actually overheard a conversation with somebody talking to uh, like their younger, the younger like nephews or whatever. And then he's like, "Are you watching WandaVision?" And the, and the, and the kids like, "Yeah." Um, can Can you explain it to me? Like, is it something to do with the comics? I don't. I don't get it. Yeah. And, like and I'm like that. Clearly, that feels like that perfectly John, explains it to you me. You have not used the hydra soap that both Rob and myself yes. are using right now. So why? You're, why? You're why all do I need in. to watch that? I don't need it's to great. watch that. It's great. <laughs> the hydra soap is is fantastic. It lathers up really nice, and it just tells you that everything's going to be all right. Um. So, yeah, I I understand what you're saying. Like, I don't think everyone is. Every Marvel show is going to be for you. I think at the temple is these movies yeah. are going to bring no, us all if, back if together. If it was a twenty-minute sequence that that was like you know yeah. about her giving uh, birth and it had fine. a plot yeah. to it, then yeah, I'm hundred percent. It's, it's no cool. different than you know your your Hobbs and Shaw movie. It's it's just a, a dilliage to another area, trash. and you can you can watch <laughs> it 
where where you can go to Samoa and then you know do the stuff with the Rock, or you can carry on with the main storyline with the you know the rest of the Fast and Furious. Just like Tyrese as as Roman as uh, he works as a yard like a spinoff of him working as a like a used car uh, dealership salesperson. Like that would be the the spinoff version of of the Fast and Furious, the life before the I had a life before this show. Like that would be the show where all of them. The, would be like, the I had life, life before, before is the, is that baby boy movie. So that that was his life before. But you, no, you know what? Like please, after no. after this episode, I you know what I did, John, is I watched on Disney Plus. They have two trailers on there. Trailer one, trailer two. I watched trailer two. Man, their production on these trailers really sells. Like it, it almost rejuvenated me to want to continue watching because you can see they are in full costume. Vision is flying. There is a lot. Um, just, you know what? The one thing that we have to be prepared for, it's a very real possibility, is at the end of this, Kevin Feige may be like, you know what? We did our, we, we took a shot. It, it didn't work. Well, we have learned from our mistakes. And that's not something that you would have said about uh, Marvel or Kevin Feige, you know, um, you know, three weeks ago, right? But, so, we'll but see. you know, here, here's the thing: it's a, it, it goes back to like what we, what Stu said. It's like they, they, they've just gotten too big for their britches. Like mm. there is a great show here, right? Yep. But they have to just doll out the information more. Like I said, if at the end of every 22 minutes they panned out and you saw that, oh, it's the military watching yeah. this dome. And then you had a couple of sword agents and maybe a shield agent or yeah. something. And they're saying, hey, we're now gonna try to tunnel underneath or, hey, let's let's get giant yeah. man. Maybe he can lift sure. up, you know, something. Yeah. There is stuff there, but they're not giving it to us. And honestly, like this, everything else is inconsequential. Like, yeah. like absolutely. And no matter what, they should have known that going in. You can't write a book and it's going to be 300 pages and say the first 200 pages is build up, but that last hundred, oh boy, you need, nobody's going to get there. To be fair, Andre, right? they did that in the, like the 17th century when they release, you know, a snippet of a book each time in the newspaper and that's how you got books, but well, uh, times have changed. Yeah, but, times have changed. And, and, and to, 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 to John's point. The budget of this show is more than the Winter Soldier. They spent more money on on WandaVision, uh, potentially more than eighty million dollars more for this show than they did for Winter Soldier. Like it doesn't Winter show right now, not yet. But again, I think it's it's the money is there. So at question. least the one thing we can be happy about, though, sorry Stu, is that from episode one to this, there is way more pulling of that tapestry in this episode than there was in the first. And I agree, but to Andre's point, like maybe the, the release strategy is like, we'll pivot. We'll do two episodes a week to get you faster yeah. along because yeah. one episode of 22 minutes is not enough to get people hooked in. If, if yeah. they would have said here, we know we've, we, okay, fine. We cannot change the fact the show is slow, but let's now, instead of doing one episode a week, let's continue doing two and get people more involved as opposed to, no, you're going to, you're going to have your, you know, you got to eat your vegetables and have these six episodes before you get to the fun stuff. We're not a society now with all the kids and whatnot are used to waiting for stuff. You know so what's a change? Stu, that's a that's a wicked pivot. And I, and I know it's going to go off track just for a, a, a yeah. minute. So bear with me. I don't know if you guys uh, heard on, I think it was Friday, Microsoft announced that they're increasing the price of Xbox Live Gold. So mm -hmm. for you guys out there listening, you probably know Xbox Live Gold is their subscription service. And uh, this is going to be the first time in like 12 years that they raised the price, but it was a substantial increase. Now, there was so much backlash yeah. in less than a day that they came out and said, OK, hey, we've heard you. We're not going to raise it. But a cherry on top now, any free to play games, people are now going to be able to play without having access to gold. Yeah. So they learned from their mistake instantly. And then they said, we're sorry. And coming in the next couple of months. If you don't have Xbox Live Gold, but you want to play with your friend, like John doesn't have Xbox Live Gold anymore, we could fire up Fortnite now because it's a free-to-play yep. game. So I'm like, that's huge. So maybe, maybe Marvel slash Disney can listen to what else another big corporation did, like you said, and maybe say, yeah, let's fire this up. This show's already been done. Let's get two episodes out or let's cut these episodes uh, to become 44 minutes for the next little bit or whatever. This I think, into I think it's easy to do two so episodes it's possible. Hey, if Microsoft yeah. could do it in a day, and and kudos for Microsoft for that because I thought that was huge. So yeah, I think it's easier to to release episodes than cut. I think cut is 
we get into the uh, Snyder side of things and different cuts of episodes would make it really hard uh, for Marvel. It would, plus then we'd complain that they were just too long for no reason. Like that all this at long cut of episodes of comedy. I'm like, you know, what? just, just give me two. Yeah, episodes no, I meant, I meant just alone. like yeah. splice them yeah. together and, and release it, you know, but yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's one of those things where, and I think back to those, the, if Pat was here, uh, I would mention it's like to your point, Andre too, is that we need, DC not to continually fall apart. We need to, them to be elevated to the point where they are an actual competitor to Marvel to challenge them to do stuff on another level. The prime of when the WWE and the WCW were both very good, you had some of the best content because they were pushing each other, elevating each other to do more. And right now, as you said, Marvel is just so far ahead that there is no one that challenges them and makes them do anything different is that they're just like, well, here you go. Here's this. It's gold, Jerry. And uh, it's not, uh, you know, as much as I like it too, it, there, there needs to be someone to push them and challenge them and make them think twice about decisions. And right now they are the only ones in town and you definitely can see in this show, it's like, well, they had all these ideas that it's, you know, hey, the show's going to be great and it's going to be this show and in concept it is, but if they don't pivot at all, it's really more indicative of, of stubbornness and then maybe that's a bad thing too. So we'll see. Or shareholders or whatnot, but I, I wish, Rob, to your point that, that Kevin Feige will say he's wrong. I don't think he's going to say no he's way. wrong. No way. He's not going to say anything. Um, he's, he's just going to be like, whoops, misstep. Maybe we should release more. Or it's like, well, we had a bigger vision, and that's what it is. I, I don't think he's ever going to say he's wrong in terms the of – The pandemic made us delay it, and there was too many people critical because they were all at home watching it. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, at the end of the day, we could all be wrong, and this show, the payoff could be amazing. Those last – three two or three episodes you know which will amount to almost a, a full movie could be just amazing so yeah but the, but, but the payoff but, is know. it's just like a, a other way around you cannot make me watch a terrible <laughs> movie because right. the last <laughs> 10 minutes is great and vice versa a movie can be terrible like hancock if the first 40 minutes is amazing and the last 40 minutes is brutal so it's like it can happen both ways or you know so well if anybody uh, my, knows about watching terrible movies it's john and i so <laughs> yeah. yeah uh so let me just talk to you guys quickly about uh the young avengers so we we talked about before those who, who do not know uh marvel is now putting the seeds to the team of the young avengers whether it's you know uh the fact that they have now cast the hawkeye they have cast you know the the young uh ant-man or slash giant girl or statue as or stature as, as they refer to you know, there, there's rumors, the fact that there's a Patriot being cast, there's Wiccan and Speed in this show. So it looks like they are moving towards the Young Avengers, including the fact that they've already cast Kang the Conqueror. So uh, who, spoiler alert, in the comic books is the man in the future comes back in time to create this set Young Avengers. So John, what is your thoughts on the fact that Marvel is creating this Young Avengers team and we probably get it sooner than later that we'll have this whole team together no I, th I think it's good like i said before when we did our luke, luke cage iron fist uh cast and they, they got to start uh, uh cultivating or, or or bringing light to these younger characters um to catch uh the, the new youth that might not be into into this stuff or might not have grown up or, or been old enough to grow up on the current series of movies um, so I, I'm, I'm fine with it. Uh, I think it, Miss America is on this team as well, right? America Chavez. So, um, yeah, I think they'll make a pivot. The original young Avengers was Patriot Hulkling, which was, yeah. was scroll, uh, spoiler alert, uh, Wiccan speed, uh, uh, Kate Bishop, uh, Kate Bishop, which is Hawkeye and then, uh, Iron Lad and then, uh, stature. I think that was the original group. And then they've yeah. added kid Loki, They've added, you know, a ton yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of young. Version two is Miss America, Marvel Boy, and Prodigy are characters as well, right? So, yeah, fine. Bring them, bring them all on. Start, start, start something new and, and younger. You could do it TV or you can do it movies. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Rob? <clears throat> you know, uh, when I watch these movies, as we've seen, um, uh, I there's a connection because I've read these comic books as a kid and I'm yeah. seeing these things come to life. I'm not overly familiar with Young Avengers. So for me, I feel like the pendulum or the teeter-totter is coming and I'm slowly going down as everything else is going up. And I won't recognize this new 
MCU. I won't recognize these characters. And there's a risk of me, and I, this is just a realization that I'm, I'm not that target demographic, um, that I'm not gonna connect to these movies as much as I have to these first four phases, uh, because those are characters I grew up with. So um, I'll watch it, but I, I can see a possibility in, on the horizon where I don't have the same level of excitement because I have no connection to these characters. And um, I, it's not anybody's fault. It's just time. <laughs> right? I, I think it's, uh, it's a good yeah, opportunity, Rob, for you to pick up the trade of Young Avengers and read it. I think it's actually one of my favorite runs. Uh, so it's, it's a really good read. Uh, Andre? Bring me power pack. All right. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think Rob makes a, a good point, but I would I will Damn say right that I do. yeah I I will <laughs> say that basically Rob is now in the position of millions, if not billions, of viewers of the MCU stuff who just knew the characters superficially by saying, "Oh, I recognize Iron Man," mm. you know, from something, but I don't know anything about it. So I think Marvel definitely has to go to that younger well. And if if not make a Young Avengers cartoon, they need to do something to get these characters into the popular culture's center vision yeah. and then utilize them. So, yes, we are getting Kate Bishop in this new Hawkeye show. So hopefully that's good. Hopefully it sticks. Hopefully it's geared to a, uh, a you know, a young adult tween level. So we have stuff that can bring youth yeah. into enjoying comics and you know, superhero stuff so that we're not looking at our cast of, of, of MCU um, big leagues as people that are, you know, 50 plus, you know, we, yeah. we need, you know, young blood in there. Like, you know, like we need the, the Tom Hollins and we need the, you know, the, the supporting young people to, to, to come in. Cause that's, what's going to, that's, what's going to keep it alive. And then, and then we're going to have to write some really good uh, stories uh, f for them, for these characters to shine. I just hope Marvel, you know, takes a little bit of the, the time. Like you said, it's coming sooner than later. But again, this pandemic has slowed everything down. So it, it, it I hope they take the time to make strong story instead of saying, yo, we need to get Young Avengers out by 2022. No, I, they just, yeah. They just, they just put every character in a show and we don't learn anything. And then, yeah. oh, hey, look, you guys are all thrown together now. You know, so I, I think I think they've they've learned. Uh, I think they know a, a method, and they're not going to DC it and throw all these guys in one movie. Uh, I think they're just, you know, the pandemic has pushed the timelines back, so I don't think it's a rush. But they're also the only productions that can be made right now because they got money to burn. So all the Marvel stuff is being filmed because, frankly, no one can afford all the PPE and all the stuff they require to do filming in Atlanta, London, and in parts of you know LA. Like things are stopping right now because. If, you do, if you're not a large multinational media company, like small productions are not being filmed. Small, small, small TV shows are not being done. It's like, there's only a certain number of companies that can do it. So like you said before, uh, you need some COVID cash right now. So sign up for a Marvel movie because you're going to get paid. Other than that, all those small movies that we would watch these see, they aren't getting done. Or if they are, it's really skeletal. Welcome back to the floor, Chris Evans. Chris Evans, call yeah. me back. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. but you can also, see Also, Robert Downey Jr., yeah. next on deck. Next on deck, Robert uh, Downey Jr. <laughs> I think Robert Downey actually is someone who has enough money he won't care. But uh, Chris Evans does not have Robert Downey back-end money. Like, And Downey also is producer, right? So he is kind of has his money on other things. So he doesn't need to work again. Yeah, like Sweet Tooth. Yeah, yeah, he don't have to work. He and he has a as a, another Sherlock Holmes movie coming out. So don't worry, John. He's he's fine for a while. So, <laughs> all right. Well, that is going to conclude our, our thoughts and all over the place on WandaVision. I look forward to next week and see what happens. Whether John is here or not, we'll find out. So we will see what happens. Uh, Andre, it is now time for your segment, the I have spoken segment. So go ahead, tell us, recommend something for us to check out this week. All right, so uh, I am doing a little bit different on uh, on on this segment. It's still going to be a recommendation, uh, but it's going to be a recommendation for people who are into uh, board games and card games. Uh, you know, if you're playing Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, Marvel Champions, any type of card game that uses standard card sleeves. So recently, uh, I think it's been about a week, I... Um, hooked up with a buddy of mine over zoom and we dug out an old card game so let me let me just go get something Stu's gonna be 
extremely excited what? about this. You can't recommend something people can't get. What do you hold on, Stu? Hold what? on. What? You can I get know it. where you're going. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going. Look, so boom. Who recognizes this here? Robbie? I know immediately what it is. All right. All right, <laughs> Stu. <laughs> Stu, what is it? It's overpower. Right on. So clear I, overpower. <laughs> I busted out my overpower we played, but I realized that these cards are so old, I haven't used them in a while. I needed to modernize and protect these cards with some new hot deck protectors. So my recommendation are the new or new-ish Eclipse sleeves from Ultra Pro, okay? So Ultra Pro is probably the industry standard in deck protectors and protecting your cards, whether it's sports cards, whether it's, you know, collectible cards, they do up, you know, photos, everything but what's cool about these eclipse sleeves is not only they come in a whole bunch of colors but they're opaque so the color is you're not going to see the backing through the through the sleeve they've got a nice textured matte finish so there's no glare and the inside of the sleeve is also a dark gray so it almost puts a nice frame around your cards my overpower cards have never looked better i'm telling you these sleeves are awesome Last thing I want to say about the Ultra Pro sleeves is this is one, the Eclipse brand is a little bit of their higher end. They have different tiers. They've got like their standard, they've got their matte finish, uh, but this is like their little bit of a higher end sleeve. And I would compare these to some of the even more expensive brands that are out there. I personally like the Ultra Pro Eclipse a little bit better than the Katana name brand. And I would say, just for the overall look and feel of them, I do like them better than Dragon Shields. Not saying that they are better, but I do believe for your buck, this is probably my recommended brand. Again, it's not as expensive as Katana or Dragon Sleeve, but I think the quality is exactly there. So if you are playing a card game, be it old or new, or a board game that needs sleeves, definitely check out ultra pros line of eclipse brand we have several of their colors in stock not all of them but we can bring them in and that's another good thing about ultra pro stock they're usually pretty good uh but it's an excellent brand uh so that is my i have spoken so for all you card gamers out there or people who want to delve into card games or protect your board game stuff and they do come in the standard size so that's your magic the gathering size pokemon size and a lot of card games do use standard sl card sleeves leaves too so you could use it for that it's a big yeah, question card, card, card technology your... has come a long way yeah john come on there are bigger questions <laughs> to ask who is in that deck who are your four heroes That's oh big man question. john Dude. why are you fluffing this up i want to know who your four power all right who let are me, the four in your deck because again here. people who don't know overpowers three in the front one in the back who are your four uh all i right. will wow. tell you my four characters <laughs> right now rob you're my thinking deck. something else yes, go for it all right first up Heroes for Hire. Yep. yep. Bam. Yeah. Mentioned during up, our last podcast. The Hand. Wow. So you uh -huh. notice yep. a fighting theme, yep. right? We yep. saw Star Jammers, who I think are probably yep. the best team. Yep. Amazing specials. And for all my overpower peeps out there, you already know who's in reserve. X Baby. The best <laughs> reserve character ever. Stu's man. Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Mm. He can play three Shoot cards back, from yeah. reserve. He's got a pretty good grid. So this is this is my un almost undefeatable team here, right here, folks. It's, uh, I have an undefeatable was... deck, but unfortunately, Nick Singh, Arun's brother, took my cards and never gave them back. Oh, my, I have cards. I have my, cards. My I will, four, you, you let me know what you are need. Master Mold, <laughs> Sentinels, Silver Surfer, Invisible Woman. Because Invisible Woman in the back can defend. Can defend that. the front, yes. <laughs> so I had characters that can... <laughs> Cos <laughs> cosmic healing, master mold healing, and also defend and block for each other. So nice. he ain't hitting me. So yeah, nice. Nick, Nick Singh, I remember you got my crap. You got my cards. I expect them <laughs> back. So there we go. That was uh, Rob. Is just yeah, like, if you're listening to audio, Rob is just checked out. He has no clue what's going on. No, no, well, no. I was just thinking, man, that stork in WandaVision. Sure <laughs> <is funny. laughs> you know, that, that's shut up with your WandaVision Easter Rob eggs. Rob is like, eh, yeah. <laughs> you can keep them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, I was hoping that Rob was gonna sing his uh, the Wanda song, the uh, the whatever song that the uh, what's it? What's the what's the country she's in part again? Where she uh, Sokovia, uh, Sokovian. Because yeah. all of a sudden she busted out the Sokovian song, the lullaby, yeah, the lullaby <laughs> Sokovia. I'm like, whoa, yeah. this is a new twist. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. even the fact that they named Ultron, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I had a brother once. I'm like, finally, you mentioned you had a brother. I don't I think know. You she mentioned that you had a brother. It hasn't been mentioned in any of the MCU. Yeah. There's, there's no, there was no funeral for the dude. Like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, nope. as far as we know, your brother is dead, and you're like, you never mentioned him again. So I'm yep. like, where, where? I'm like, wait a second. If you love your brother, why isn't he here? Shouldn't your brother just be the next door neighbor? Like, yep. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll. I digress. We'll carry on. Um. Okay. So. We talked about Marvel. We talked about being the biggest monster in town. Ben Affleck has called Kevin Feige a genius. And if he says it's good, it has to be good. Uh, that's Batman himself, so you can't be wrong. Uh, news has the broken. The worst Batman. Still oh, bad. Not the I worst. So. Not the worst. Who was um, worse than him? George Clooney. No <laughs> yeah. way. No what? way. Yeah. Yes. The movie, the movie might have <laughs> been worse. Did you rewatch Clooney Batman and Robin Batman. yet? Andre? No, Andre hasn't watched watch Batman and Robin. No, he hasn't watched it. When was the last time you watched Batman and Robin, Andre? I don't know. There you, you go. You have to <laughs> you, there you go. <laughs> Everything seems all good until you watch the movie again. You're like, oh, no, never mind. When was the last time you watched Ben Affleck as Batman? Uh, a last few months week. ago. Last, <laughs> yeah. last, okay. last week. <laughs> He, you know, when, when he's working out, he's not bad. He, he has some good moments. Uh, hey, you throw Ben Affleck into the Dark Knight trilogy and that, uh, like, his bat version of Bruce Wayne and Batman, Batman that would be, an, like, that would elevate that movie. As much as oh, I love Christian Bale. Oh, slow down, down, slow down, slow down, slow down, Rob. Whole, whole other podcast. He's Ben Affleck's Bruce <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wayne and his Batman, so don't tell how many, me. How many, you know, slow down. He had Christian no Bale, difference. Christian Bale did Christian a great Bale job, man. Great. Oh, I'm not taking, I'm just saying... He would be he'd be great. Ben, I would love to see Ben Affleck's version of Batman in the Dark Knight trilogy. Slow down, slow down, slow down. I'm slow banning down. you um, away, Rob. I'm banning <laughs> you away. Yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah. was that was. I thought maybe you dropped one. I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you dropped the sticky <laughs> one saying that Ben Affleck, ben Affleck is Affleck. better than Christian Bale. That's not what I said. I just you said you did. You did. You in said a elevated. Way elevated. <laughs> Aggregators, get on it. Elevate <laughs> means better. Not 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 worse. Better. Anyways. So you, I'm, that's it, Rob. You you now put your, I, I get what you're feeling because you can't cheer for your boy anymore. So you have to latch on someone else. And now we know <laughs> your new guy's Ben Affleck. So what we don't see is, guys, prepare yourself in the next month. Rob is going to turn around, unveil his giant Phoenix tattoo on his back because <laughs> the copy yeah. dragon that copies uh, Ben Affleck. So we'll see yeah. what happens. That That's yep. in our future. Um, okay. So uh, Rob sent a uh, post of, uh, confidentially, of course, in our, our our Heroes World chat that we have back and forth about Ethan Hawke joining the MCU uh, in a TV show. And I was like, wow, Ethan Hawke. I never would have expected this would be the guy uh, because, you know, before Sunset and all these other things, he didn't seem like a, a Reality bites. Reality bites um, <laughs> or, or the purge. But nonetheless, he is now embraced movie franchise fandom and he's going to be the villain of the moon Knight show so i asked everyone on this uh you know panel to give me an actor and doesn't even just give me an actor that you would be genuinely surprised if news came out on deadline and variety that they were part of a marvel show you don't have to give me the role just give me a name john of someone you <laughs> genuinely like wow i can't believe that they're going to be in a marvel movie just- well i'd be very surprised to see any projects from this particular guy and he goes by the name of army no okay not army hammer um can i can i actually go with like a, a director i would actually want to say martin scorsese um because he's the one he that says he doesn't like marvel stuff yeah, yeah he, he, he basically trashed it so if they were like okay you know what we talked to this guy um and we've got a project and he's down with it um i think that would be absolutely crazy and he actually posted a whole thing defending what he was saying he was just saying that this particular genre is not for him and things like that um so i would be very, very surprised if, if he popped up on attached to something, anything Marvel. Not following the rules, but I'll let it go because John is all right, in Clint his own world. world. All right, there we go. We're done. You're, you're out. You're out. You're done. Uh, you can check Rob, Rob Gadet. Rob Gadet. What there a prick because John actually took my <laughs> what I was thinking. I was like, I would be legitimately surprised if they were like Clint Eastwood. This is actually a really hard uh, because you think, oh, that's kind of easy, but it's not because 
like I would be legitimately surprised if Oprah Winfrey, who has acted in numerous things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, yes, it happened. It happened. Each of you just stole each other's thunder. It's great. <laughs> um, there you go. Uh, there was is Oprah so, Winfrey. Your, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, man. tell us, tell us. I, yeah, I would have been legitimately surprised. Like, I'd be like, wow. Um, but I actually, I want it. I actually would am going to pick. You're, we just yeah. talked. To, we just talked about him. Was uh, Ben Affleck. I would be legitimately surprised if they pulled Ben Affleck and put him into a Marvel property, especially in recent, he just gave a, um, an interview with Hollywood reporter, I think. And he's like, I'm done with these kind of bigger budget movies. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to like be focusing on things that I can make and I can direct and where my passion is. And I would be legitimately surprised if they, you know, and it could happen in the next five or 10 years, you know, Hey, old man, Logan, you know, bring in um, Ben Affleck into the MCU. So, but it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult, topic that you threw out there because there is just a myriad of things including Oprah. Winfrey. I'd rather have Clint Eastwood hey, as old man Logan. That'd be dope. Clint Eastwood wouldn't last like more than two scenes as old man Logan. <laughs> He's like, get off. Ma. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, Andre. All right. So, um, so we had some fun discussing this in our, in our pre, um, uh, our pre podcast discussion. So yeah, this is a very hard question because you know it's it's so open. Like you could be genuinely surprised about a lot of people just randomly coming up. But I guess it would be if we're surprised because they're actually going to come in there and do something. Like you know, mm -hmm. so this was a hard one for me to pick because you know Rob picked Oprah Winfrey and I was I was legit going <laughs> to say like she could end up in there right, but. So I'm going to go with somebody else that's, that's really cool um, and uh, is just done a lot of stuff. And I think he would fit into the MCU, uh, whether as an actor or as, a, as his voice. And I'm going to go Danny Trejo. And I think that he would be hmm. like, you would be like, yo, if that announced, you'd be like, who the hell is he playing? So there'd be a lot of wheels turning and stuff like that. And I think, I think he'd be uh, a super cool addition to, uh, to the MCU whoever he played i think it's a great pick i gotta say i'm a little bit disappointed that you didn't throw down your original pick that we discussed well that was just me being silly like you know so like but that I, was a really good like paul what? rubens also known as Pee Wee herman could you imagine if all of a sudden <laughs> you find out paul rubens has signed on for an mcu you'd be like what like I, I, I would be actually you know even more upset with the mcu than i currently am i'd be like oh my god this is like the worst choice ever <laughs> <laughs> you know, It'd be a but, great uh, Mephisto. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! <laughs> just, just, just go, just make him slapstick. Let's just go the other direction. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know that's. I I thought because we had this chat and Andre's like it's too it's too difficult. I'm like okay, fine. Uh, name me a Canadian actor. He wanted to define it. I'm like a Canadian <laughs> actor between <laughs> the age of thirty to sixty, and I thought you were gonna go and like and you're like I got one, and I'm like you're never gonna guess. And I'm, in my mind, I thought. Andre's going to say Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey in the MCU, and he'd be genuinely surprised if Jim Carrey showed up because Jim Carrey is like a weird actor at this point, and he probably doesn't want to do any of this stuff anymore. And he hated his experience on, on Kick-Ass. So if Jim Carrey was the guy, you'd be, you would just genuinely be like, how is he in this movie? So I, I thought that that was who you were going with. No, I, I, if, if, if I can indulge in, in, in the pick, like Stu throw down a really cool gauntlet. It's like pick a Canadian actor. And he, I think he said 32 to 50 um, and stuff. So I was thinking about it and it, especially more along the lines of the TV. So you guys will never guess. Cause you'd be like, how does Andre even know this person? Because especially I don't know actors and stuff, but Canadian actor Drake? Is it Drake? Uh, and the Canadian <laughs> actress. And I'm, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to pronounce her name wrong, but uh, Nina Dubray. Vampire from, Diaries. From, from Vampire Diaries and, and Z, the Return Triple of Xander X. Cage. Yes. And I would cast her as Typhoid Mary. Because if you watched any of the Vampire Diaries, yes, I watched some of the Vampire She plays two different characters. One is kind of like good and the other's ancient and evil. And I'm like, yo, she could do that. And look, we had uh, Tatiana Mussolini who plays multiple in yeah. um, uh, the Orphan, Orphan Black. Orphan Black, Black yeah. And she's amazing. And I just feel that 
while her playing She Hulk is 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 good. Like I don't think we're gonna get her range, but I do think uh, Nina would do a would be a welcome addition to the MCU, especially playing up next to Charlie Cox. I can see I could see them in some type of Daredevil thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I hit all the buzzers. Uh, Canadian. Under no, you missed it, Andre, because I did say ethnicity too. But uh, I'm gonna let you. You slide said white. On that one. You said white, didn't she you? Is, she is not. She is. She is a mix of different things. From she is not. Nina Dobrev is not not uh, of of one. She's a mix of minority. But okay, nonetheless. But, but okay, Stu. Unfortunately, I don't know her bio. But if you look at her picture, she white with straight straight hair. So to this brother, she white. <laughs> I, I don't see. Light. I don't you, see color, dude, Andre. You put, but her, in a, you put her in a lineup, dude. Uh, Andre, to saying, be fair, oh, also mixed. Andre decides to only pick characters that went with a 25 kilometer life near him because she went to Unionville High School too. So Andre's <laughs> like, I can only pick actors that live. So I didn't. I didn't Aiden even know Christensen. that. I knew she went to Ryerson, but she I didn't know to, she went she to went Unionville. Unionville. So, so that's like Andre's like, I'm just gonna pick people that went close to the store. Even better, because support <laughs> local talent. She, well, she, I, yeah, so, listen, you know. Stu, Stu messaged me privately and said, you know, if he could, he would throw in the Edison twins into the MCU. <laughs> A uh, great Canadian classic TV. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, first of all, one of the Essen twins was in Star Trek uh, First Contact. So don't, she was yeah. the person that got converted to the Borg immediately. She was the redhead yeah. girl, and then she yeah. goes, <gasps> and then she got turned into a Borg uh, drone. So here we go. Uh, that's don't don't think I don't know these things, Rob. I really do know. Uh, here we go. So uh, she is Bulgarian, uh, Andre. She's yeah. So and how is that not white? Uh, when you Eastern think European? of people from Bulgaria, do you think people of say my color or she's little, yours she's, or John she's, color? She's, a, like, she's she's olive, so she, you know this this is a thing. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, she she is she is she fits multiple as the gold standard. She hits just like Kristen Crook. She hits a lot of verticals where you're not sure what her ethnicity is. So she's she, all right. She's she's not uh, that. Okay, here we go. Uh, as we move to the next uh, thing, Andre talked about games before. Uh, the news popped in. It's been a little while that, you know, the, the finally, the, 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 uh, the monopoly is over. LucasArts has now said, EA, you're not making enough Star Wars games. Uh, clearly, you're not paying us enough. Everyone else, you can make Star Wars games again. So the world has rejoiced. We are all happy that we can finally get new Star Wars games from different studios and different places. Uh, they're not just EA Star Wars games, although the rumors of Battlefront 3 are coming out, and we all know Battlefront's... Eh. Um, but here we go. So, uh, and outside of the Star Wars game, which Rob hated and Andre loved, uh, there will be more Star Wars games. So I've asked everyone to name a studio and a game that you would love to see in the future. And we know already Andre has an affinity for Knights of the Old Republic, so I would be surprised if Andre does not go that one route. But I'm going to let John go first. John, what is a Star Wars game you want to see and, and name the studio? Uh, for yeah, for for e easy answer for me, um, I was going to go Grand Theft Auto style, so it's Star Wars stealing Star Wars. Grand Theft Coruscant. Oh. But, but yeah, I'm Coruscant's actually gone, go Andre. It's gone. It blew, <laughs> blew's up. It blew up. Dude, I'm gonna we, go with we, my... We're not acknowledging those movies. So it, it happened. It exists. It's over. We so could he set the game. Else. We could set the game before that. Poor right? John. Okay, he just true. wants to answer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'm going. I'm going with the easy answer for me. My most favorite gaming genre, and it, that is a, a fighting game. So I want to be able to have Mace Windu versus Kylo Ren. I want to be able to do Luke Skywalker versus yep. Darth Vader versus Rey yep. versus Finn, whoever I want to do, uh, Dooku versus uh, Darth Maul, like all those kind of things. Um, so, and, and I would choose, um, ideally I would like to choose like Namco or Capcom to make a really in-depth fighter, but I think we need uh, lots of people to jump onto this game for it to be successful and be able to have all this DLC and have the entire Star Wars universe available. So I would either choose NetherRealm Studios or there was a newer studio that made a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game called Enway, uh, which was very accessible to new players. Um, I would probably choose either of those um, just to just have fun with it. There was a studio a long time ago that did make a Star Wars fighting game. It was like kind of 3D-ish. It was, it was kind of trash. Um, so if, I would love to see that again and, and have lightsaber duels. They kind of did it a little bit with Soul Calibur through in Yoda and, uh, and the characters from Force Unleashed, I think was the game. Um, so I would like to see it like full-blown kind of crazy, crazy, uh, all out, very highly competitive 
in a Las Vegas tournament scene fighting game. Okay, that's uh, that's that's on brand, John. Good choice. Uh, I'm sure you'll try to get Tyrese to voice Mace Windu, but we'll carry on. Oh, that'd be dope. No, uh, Samuel Jackson got to come back. <laughs> it can afford him, uh, Mr. Rob Gadet. What is your what is your game? What is your <laughs> the studio? Well, I definitely wouldn't use CG CD Project Red for any <laughs> upcoming Star Wars <laughs> games. Tell you that. why not. Why not? Um, well, I have a funny feeling that uh, the news of this new 1.1 patch has pretty much destroyed a lot of people's games and bricked them pretty hard. If you want to look at recent news, we're recording this on Sunday. So uh, there's a lot that's come out, I guess, in the last day or so about that. Um, so you, for me, I would pick a studio that I think has done. There's two studios I was kind of bouncing between, which is Naughty Dog and Rockstar, because they both released things in the last two years uh, really heavy on story. Um, but I'm going to go with Rockstar, um, who are known for the Red Dead Redemption. Uh, no, John just said um, Grand Theft Auto. But I, I want to use the Red Dead. I think what they did in Red Dead 2 uh, was phenomenal in terms of a story and its character. And really just like that character of John Marston, man, you feel like you are with him. And uh, without giving spoilers away to the game, for those who haven't played it, you should pick it up. But it, it's heartbreaking his his um, story and trajectory so i would want to take that but i would want that make a, a red dead type game with <laughs> with with um seth bullock himself <laughs> um timothy oliphant as as uh the in the as the sheriff that we saw in mandalorian uh season two episode one i believe so uh, i would like to see that um and i think that would be a, a, an open world western type game um, and set in the Star Wars universe. The, uh, the twi- two suns in the background as you drive your speeder right. across the sands. Yes, it's <laughs> very, right. very majestic. Uh, although you miss the water, like the, what you do in Red Dead when you can walk by waterfalls and it's just sand planet. So it's, it's a little rough. Uh, that's a good choice. Uh, Andre. All right, Stu. As I said, this was, wow, this is a great question. Uh, can you, I did my homework. Can you enable the screen share? Oh boy! Oh my goodness! Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, I, got, I got a whole pitch. Oh, you got a full out oh, pitch. Oh God, here. multi. Well, hey, Andre, we have, got... we don't have that much time to do multimedia. When so. you say when you say Star Wars and you say video game, how do you not expect me to not do my homework? Um, <laughs> the only time Andre does homework is this yeah. Time. I was gonna say, well, the because time time. Has you do something, I was like, I can't. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, you're, I can't watch, brand I can't for watch you. Anything. I. I I need three weeks to watch Spawn, but give me one Star Wars movie. I'll drop everything to do it. He, he should have asked for infinite time to watch yeah, Spawn, yeah. then we wouldn't have had uh, to deal Andre with it. Andre's like, you know what, Howard the Duck, give me a year's notice, and I'll get yeah. back to you guys. <laughs> and I still one wouldn't Star do Wars it. Star Wars film, he's like, uh, video game, he's like, guys, stop everything. What you don't see is Andre has a room full of red lines connecting everything. He's all sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> all right, folks. So hopefully you can see this uh, on your screen. I just finished uh, a game by Moon Studios called Ori and the Will of the Wisps, a uh, sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest. And it is a classified as a Metroidvania style game. So it's a side-scrolling um, adventure game in which your character picks up different powers and abilities, which will allow you to access different areas. Uh, so that's the game I'm pitching. I want this studio to do it. It's all animated. And the characters I'm picking are don't have to be these characters, but I want all alien Padawans because the coolest thing about Ori uh, and how the storytelling, all the characters, like there wasn't much dialogue, but it was all, you know, in a different language and it was subtitled. And the really cool thing was, as you went along, your character in Ori had different powers and abilities that they would gain. So I was thinking instead of having one character, you would have a like old games back in the NES and Super NES, you'd have three or four people following you and you would just toggle in between them to Lost see Viking style. Yeah, which ones you wanted. So let's say you needed to climb that tree, boom, you switch over to the Wookiee and he's got that climb power. You need a you need to breathe underwater, boom, you switch to the Athorian Padawan or whatever. So in this uh image, I've got their their studio logo. I've got a couple of their concept art of some of their worlds. These guys create a beautiful world. It looks alien yet similar at the same time. So I think they could wonderfully capture uh, the Star Wars uniqueness. Um, but also I did a little bit of research on the studio and they are super pro 
like animation the the head of the, the the head of the studio he's like he's not a fan of motion capture and it's like a lot of these things is animation because you can show so much more and it does give you more movement sometimes motion capture no matter how it is it's stiff the characters doesn't move uh but yeah like I, if you guys haven't played that game definitely check check it out i think they're available on the switch i think and the xbox of course um phenomenal game like i said i literally just finished it so when this question came up i'm like yeah 100 nice. percent. Uh, and these guys are ex animators from some of the biggest studios and biggest games yeah. uh but they are making a mark with this with this series especially the second one you know the first one i haven't even finished i found the first one pretty difficult but the second one what a beautiful story and the control and what you could do in that game fits totally with star wars powers and how you yeah. could imagine the force being so perfect Moon all right studios love them good 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 that's uh that's a good pitch good uh uh, uh slide so thank you andre that was perfect <laughs> uh andre as we go back andre last week made a, a joke about clones and that's the solution and the, the, the problem to all of world all of our world uh, issues. So I've again now challenged everyone on this panel to you know let me know about clones. So I've challenged everyone to say clones. Uh, name a TV show or a movie either in sci-fi, fantasy or in comic books that would be better if you added a clone or a clone storyline to it. So John Ho, you're up. Name <laughs> name the thing that you'd be better if there was a clone that just showed up out of nowhere and you're not allowed to say fast and furious because it does not count as any of those things han is not a clone han is <laughs> not a clone all right so um this is pretty difficult for me uh, but the only thing i could come up with a uh, critical acclaimed show uh absolutely huge juggernaut ran eight seasons uh crazy cast a uh, very expensive budget uh and that game that show is a uh, game of thrones um, so I would clone the entire cast for the final season and y'all get a do over so that that season is null and void and you get, the, oh, those are all the clones that died. So now you get to see the, <laughs> the, the real story of how the final season ends. And, and now you can throw away your season eight box set and get your new season eight box set and be able to go back and rewatch that show uh, without the thought of the disaster that the final season was. Interesting. Interesting. I would imagine my pitch would be dream sequence. He wakes, they wake <laughs> up in a bed and it's, you know, with uh, Patrick Duffy going, what is going on here? No, no, uh, that, then, then, they can, then they can see all the clones' bodies and stuff like that. And they'd be like, wow, that, what a disaster that would have been if that happened to us. And then they proceed with their regular story. Okay. All right. It's, that, that, is, that is outside the box. Here we go. Uh, Rob, what is, what is your pitch? I've got nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, yeah, man, this is tough because it's, I don't know, whatever. Um, I'm just, uh, I literally have nothing. I'm going to throw out Back to the Future. Um, you know, if you, in Back to the Future 2, you know, in the alternate reality, um, you know, they, they cloned Marty McFly and they were able to rewrite the travesty that was Back to the Future Part 3. <laughs> uh, but keeping the ZZ Top cameo, um, then I would be happy with it. Uh, aside from that, I literally have nothing um, because you can't make some shows better with clones. So uh, <laughs> that's what are you talking about? <laughs> I, I, what do you mean? <laughs> Your show? Like I would not watch Game of Thrones with clones. So I, I, you don't want to do over? <laughs> no, because you know what? I'm happy with just ending it the way it like just. It, it You're happy with the way it ended, it. is what you just I'm said. Yes, Rob listen, is happy with the way the Game of Thrones season eight ended. Yeah, listen, it's on defensive. the record, it's much like Lo I'm a huge fan of Lost. A lot of people don't like Explains the way the season six <laughs> ended, right? But I like the way it ended. It told a story. It, it whether you liked it or not, it ended. People don't like the ending of Seinfeld, but that it is what it is. So will it? Would it make? Would you cloning Jerry Seinfeld make the ending of of Seinfeld better? Likely not. So it is what What's it is. What's the deal with clones? <laughs> <laughs> these clones are making me thirsty oh boy all right all right andre up to you all right so uh there's all this talk and it's happening that uh batman the animated series is getting uh, a new hbo series uh so i would jump uh forward and i would put a i would do a batman beyond um show and i would have somebody cloned bruce wayne young batman and obviously he would be different because 
what makes Bruce Wayne Batman isn't just his physical stature, but definitely his upbringing. So this clone wouldn't have that. And I would have a Terry McGinnis and old Bruce Wayne trying to beat and defeat a Batman in his prime that, that doesn't have the same maybe moral compass or same uh, reverence for life that uh, that Bruce Wayne Batman did. And I would set it in the future because then he would have even more crazy gadgets and stuff. And I think that would be a pretty cool uh, utilization of a, of a clone. So you, so basically you're pitching a, a Star Trek nemesis with the younger Picard played by Tom Hardy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you, if you want. <laughs> Tom Hardy as Patrick Stewart. So that was a, a, that was a, that's a movie Another that people do-over. erase from their memories uh, <laughs> yeah. very quickly. I don't even remember that movie, to be honest with you. And I know I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Andre. You, Nobody you, does. <laughs> It was, it was, you know what though? They actually did. They actually did clone Bruce Wayne in these in the three part the black label Batman Last Night on Earth. Yep, and they did a detective the, in Detective Twenty Seven Ten Twenty Seven. The story with uh, that Scott Snyder did with that machine is what made me think of that. Yeah, is you always will have a Batman, but I wanted to flip it on its head because no, that's good. Yeah, just like cloning it. him isn't isn't going to make him the same, right? Yeah. So Awesome. All right, we are jumping to our next segment, uh, Writer Spotlight. We are going to talk about uh, recommend a book by Jeff Lemaire. Uh, pick your favorite book uh, or your favorite storyline. Uh, John, go for it. What is your, your, your pick for this Canadian writer? Uh, sh- shoot. Yeah, uh, well, shout outs to, I don't know if anyone's picking Gideon Falls. Um, I didn't pick it. Um, I'm actually going with, uh, if anyone's read uh, Black Hammer uh, from uh, Jeff Lamar as a dark, uh, dark Horse title, uh, it's kind of his like love letter to Silver Age heroes, kind of along those lines. And then he did a follow-up spinoff series called uh, Skull Digger and Skeleton Boy, which is kind of referencing the kind of like 80s uh, street level hero so it's kind of like Skull Digger is like this kind of like vigilante style guy, kind of like a Batman, and he takes on this ward skeleton boy. And it's like, it's, it's ultra violent. It's very gritty. Um, it's got like kind of like Frank Miller, early Daredevil kind of tones to it. Uh, and I really like that series. They're on issue five um, and issue six is going to drop in uh, February. So it's, it's been delayed because of the pandemic, um, but it's a lot of fun. The art is like really beautiful. Um, and it's, it's just that that's my era. The street level hero is kind of like my go to punishers, daredevils, those kind of guys. So I really liked seeing um, kind of his take on it. And it did give me come some of the vibes from uh, early uh, Brian Michael Bendis powers before it started ramping up and going absolutely insane. Um, so it kind of had that feel. So I would I would recommend that book. And I think Black Hammer is kind of like a potential TV uh, property coming up or something like that. So it would be cool if they did that. Black Hammer is also a great book. Um, and then they kind of get to this this character. So which is supposedly going to have a big impact on the whole Black Hammer universe that he's creating. So uh, Skull Digger and Skeleton Boy. Awesome. Uh, Rob? Yeah, this is tough. Um, for those who, I mean, if you want a, a, a good read, check out Jeff Lemire's blog. He just said everything that he's stopping doing, including some of these taking a backseat to the Black Hammer universe. And then he listed out, he's like, I need to take a bit of a break. And then he listed out all these things that he's doing in the future. And you're like, wait, that's not a break. You've added more shit to your plate. Um, John mentions Gideon Falls. We talked about that in this show. I wanted to pick out something that um, uh, maybe has kind of flown under the radar a little bit, um, but it's the underwater welder. Um, it's just a, it's a, it's one story. It's it, one collect. It's not like it was issues collected. It's just a, a, an independently produced uh, book. Essentially, um, it's a story of a of a guy who's an oil rig worker who his job is to scuba dive and do the welding. He's got a, a wife on shore with their unborn son. He has some questions about what type of father is he going to be. And while under water working, something kind of happens that puts him into uh, a connection with his long lost father. Um, and, it, and it really is a, a, um, a story about an individual who has a change of life coming up and he's dealing with the ghosts of his past. And what does that mean for him to be a, a, a man and, and a dad? And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a phenomenal story. It's written and, and obviously illustrated by Lemire completely. Um, so I would definitely recommend going and, and picking up The Underwater Welder. Just, I think that in 2017, it was also optioned by Ryan Gosling to, um, as a film adaptation. No word on whether that's happening or not, but it's a great it's story. Right. It's a great story. Ryan Gosling just being quiet and self-reflective in a spacesuit <laughs> or a water suit seems about right up his alley. Yeah, I would uh, definitely recommend this. It's, it's yep. a great, great story. Andre? 
yeah, I, I thought 100% somebody was going to uh, pick Gideon Falls. Uh, and that's a phenomenal read. It's, it's just, it just came to an end. Uh, just, just an incredible book. So anybody yeah. out there, you definitely want to pick up Gideon Falls. Um, I, it's so hard to pick a favorite Lemire. Um, that one's one of the tops for me, but there's so much good stuff. But I wanted to draw attention to the first team up between Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino, uh, who's the artist. Uh, th that's the team of Gideon Falls. So I'm going to bring everybody's attention back to uh, DC's new 52 Green Arrow series. And I think he started at volume four for the trade paperbacks. I don't remember the exact issue, but that was when that team came on. And wow, did they ever ramp that book up? That whole run that they did together uh, was just absolutely phenomenal. Art, you know, again, instantly stellar, but just the writing, all of a sudden, uh, Oliver Queen became this really just... I don't want to say better character, but we just, we got to see the different layers of his character uh, in that run. Um, yeah, it was, it was a super stellar run. Um, a lot of people gave the new 52 a uh, flack, um, but I don't think they delved into some of these other books and characters that might not have been front and center. Uh, and I think that book was definitely one of them. I think it was, um, glossed over or passed we actually did a lot of hand selling of that run so i think people in our neck of the woods um definitely heard about it but if you guys like arrow if you like lemire or or you haven't read a lot of his stuff i would definitely jump in on that book because it's going to give you a little bit of something that you recognize but with a different spin on it too mm -hmm. good uh, perfect. So, uh, as we move on to our last and final topic, we've talked a lot about movies that John and Andre have gone, uh, John, John and Rob have gone into a lot of bad movies and whatnot. But, uh, in my mind, one of those movies has got to be a guilty pleasure. One of these movies has got to be something you actually enjoy. So I asked the panel at this moment in time, what fantasy science fiction comic book movie is your guilty pleasure, John? All right, so I, I screwed up and I thought um, you included TV in this. Nope. So I've got a I've got nope. a, a nope doesn't a count wrong nope. answer. Oh nope. nope doesn't count. I got, I'll skip I got, to, I got... I'll skip to Rob and then I'll come back to you. <laughs> so hold Rob? on. So so sorry. Can I just interject here? So guilty pleasure meaning that it's people think it's universally bad, but you like it. Oh, That's yeah. correct. Yep. You know, again, I, this is tough because there's so many uh, things out there, but I chose one. I've mentioned it on this podcast before, and this is just a movie that people don't really hold in a high regard, and it is Interstellar. I, I'm telling I just watched it again for the umpteenth time, like last week. Um, I can have it playing on the background. The Hans Zimmer score is phenomenal. That's not a guilty um, play. People love that movie. That's no, a good movie. A that, it's no. not a good movie. Not, people don't hate that nobody, movie. Nobody, nobody rips on that movie. And says it's sure garbage. they do. Oh yeah, no, there's a lot of people who just do not like Interstellar. They find the plot contrived and it's and lazy. They people do it don't if it, it followed like Inception in terms of its like originality and people like ah Inception was way better. I think Interstellar is a is a phenomenal movie that doesn't get cop the, out. What a cop up by you. That's fine. Next time I'm gonna pick a move. I'm gonna I'm gonna be more specific, Andre, to say it has to be below 50% on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. Because Interstellar <laughs> was still like it's yeah, still fresh, Interstellar was still fresh, ranked, fresh ranked, movie. ranked it's not pretty a, high. People didn't like it, but it wasn't a bomb. It wasn't, again, I'll, I'll, I'll pivot next time to say that can't be a certified fresh movie. But yeah, okay, Interstellar, you gotcha. Yeah, you, you, I love the crap out of that movie. I think yes. it's a masterpiece. So I, again, there's a, maybe for, for non-cinephiles, they don't like the movie, but I thought it was classic, classic Christopher Nolan. But um yeah, Rob. What else? What else you want to say on a on a masterpiece movie? <laughs> <laughs> can you can you carry on about a movie that you know made probably over like six hundred million of dollars? A lot of people to? just don't like that movie. Listen, same with Tenant. I haven't rewatched Tenant. People don't like Tenant. I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. But there's a lot of people who hate on Tenant. So I would say that Tenant could be considered a guilty pleasure as well. Uh, whatever. I answer, I gave my answer. John had nothing. All right. So hundred percent. Nope. I got it. The John bar is looking is up so right low. now. The bar <laughs> is so low. You just gotta walk over, Andre. You're gonna just just hop over, buddy. Just hop over, and then you automatically. If I was giving up points, you'd automatically win because Rob <laughs> answers a, a, a negative one. Um, Andre, 
Go for it. All right. So there's lots of movies, of course, that over the years have become more, you know, critical of watching. But of course, you know, young Andre was watching, you know, a ton of stuff. And in my in my physical like media collection is pretty is is pretty big. Um, you know, and uh and it's probably not as diverse as I think it it should be. Um, you know, but there's a couple movies that I will watch like like you know every every now and then and and people just look at them and they're like oh they're so stupid and cheesy and and, and stuff and uh um i don't know if you guys remember so i'm not going to pick this one again but um that uh wolverine movie the um the which one was it the, hmm? the wolverine the wolf like, yeah the wolf the wolverine with uh oh. with, that's a stupid question. I, I like I said that on the last on the last time we talked about this topic, so I'm not going to give that one again. But that was the oh, one with um, <laughs> Saber Tooth as uh, as what's the guy? Oh, that's Origins. That's Origins. Oh, that's Origins. Well, well, Origins. Well, Wolverine Origins. Origins. Yeah, Wolverine Deadpool. Origins with with yeah. uh, Liv Shriver as Saber Tooth. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, Ron that's a, that's a pure <laughs> guilty pleasure. Yeah, movie. like I like, you like but, it. Yeah, but I agree. It's it's the, a bad um, movie. It's a it's a good choice. Yeah. The the. Another one of my guilty pleasures is uh, now this you, one is going to get burn even it, more Audrey, laughter. I'm going to ask a question again in the future. You're going to burn it now because <laughs> believe me. No, I'm no, no. I've that. got lots of guilty pleasures. Trust me. But my, my <laughs> next one, I'm I'm going with Aeon Flux. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a proper bomb. Yeah, that bomb. movie yeah. looks looks great. It had some really nice sci-fi knots. Who doesn't like Charlize Theron? But the movie just didn't like people were just not feeling that movie. Like I still remember that scene where the her and they're running and they jump over the wall and she pounces on the gr and the grass is about to come up and prick her and she's got like this. How are you bending like that? Anyways, I still love that movie. If it's on, I watch it. I bought it on Blu-ray, yes, DVD and Blu-ray. So yeah, <laughs> wow. I'm I, I'm right in there. And she she talks about it during interviews, and she actually yeah. has like they thought it was going to be something else, and it just didn't turn out. It didn't turn. And be. I will say, uh, just as a, a final note, this is going to cause a lot of big backlash, but I actually like the movie better than the cartoon. Remember the M MTV cartoon that was based on? So, so dark, yeah. Andre. I can I don't I don't disagree with you. It's so dark and it walks away going, I need to take a long shower <laughs> and, and I really need to think about my life because it is so damn dark yep. and so damn depressing that you're like, I I I, I can't do this. You gotta be in the right state of mind to watch a yeah. flux. It's 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 a really rough yeah. <laughs> rough rough. You think you're having a great day, watch an episode, and then yeah. uh, and I'll be able to get through it. Um, so that's not a hot take. No, great, great job, Andre. Uh, thank you for actually following the rules and doing your job uh john yeah so this is actually on my list and i just went in another direction because i thought it'd be funnier but um we're going to go back to 1995 um the movie actually takes place in the year 2021 it stars um everybody's guy right now uh keanu reeves um the uh, villain was dolph lundgren uh, it was a little movie called Johnny Mnemonic, Johnny Mnemonic. Um, where Keanu Reeves plays a, a cur yeah. courier with a hard drive in his head, transporting some. How much gig how, how much memory does he have, by the way? Do you remember? I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. But I think it was like it, a gig. It actually was it an was old like, Oh my out. God, it's a gig of, of data yeah. in his it's, 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 it's a couple <laughs> gigs. Yeah, it came up. It's a couple, couple gigs. I thought it was going to be 512 megabytes or something. And I was yeah. like, no, it's not <laughs> But it is a couple like, gigs. Yeah. And he kind of kind of has to do that 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 chi thing where he kind of like crams it into his brain because he's like bleeding out of his nose and everything like that. And I watched this movie a lot when I was a kid. Um, it was a cool flick. But it's, it it's out well. there. There's a dolphin at the end. Yep. The dolphin's great. <laughs> the dolphin's great. Yep. And and Dolph Lundgren is, looks whack as hell in it. So <laughs> Yeah, but have you watched it recently? It's got iced tea in it. I, I watched yeah. it a couple of years ago. Yeah. I don't believe Actually, it. I don't yeah. own it. I should tech check it out. Is it is it available streaming anywhere? I think I watched it. I think it was. I don't know if it is now anymore. Yeah, it used to be um, on Crave, I think. But yeah. yeah. Um okay. Uh Rob, no. Interstellar. Yeah. Yeah. Death. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Um, there we go. All right. So that brings an end to that gong show of a segment. I'm going to clearly Andre is right. I need to be more specific. I need to highlight the word. Movie no, no, I, I, I didn't know you. You in said the question. You said I think movie. I sent that question movie. like three different times. Yeah, yeah. And you I said think, movie. I, I for some reason, I thought this would be funny for me to pitch this TV show. Um, that I'm maybe, sure maybe, a next lot of you time watch. On, just hold, put that on hold, John. Put that on hold. Right. I'll get to TV shows later. It will it'll get there. Um, so, John, Andre, where can we find you guys on the interwebs, the internet, and whatnot? 
Yeah. Uh, so for, first, quick shout outs to my guy, Connor McGregor, who supplies me with this, uh, this cool background. Um, Connor McGregor art on SD. Uh, not that Connor McGregor, another, another very nice gentleman. Uh, he's actually done some really cool stuff for this show. He, I mean, the store, he, he did an art piece for us and auctioned it off and, and gave us the proceeds and things like that. He does a lot of cool prints. Like you see a bunch of Batman ones behind me. Uh, he also does commissions. So if you wanted uh, his specialty right now has been doing uh, uh, pictures of uh, couples or families uh, on a comic book cover. So he'll draw uh rob it's superman or something and then he can put in people and, and things like that so so shout outs to him i'll put his link in the bio uh but for us holo, follow us on uh, heroes world online the facebook and the instagram uh, most active uh we do update it with our curbside pickup hours and things like that um and you can message us through any means and we'll usually get it and set you up uh and then if you're on youtube here uh please please subscribe we use we could use subs um so definitely subscribe so we can kind of get to that next level um, and then the uh, audio, the iTunes and Spotify and everything else, uh, Heroes World podcast uh, link will be in the description. Awesome. Uh, Andre? Yeah, right on. As John said, right now we are mostly, uh, uh, well, we are all curbside pickup. So your best way to reach us is going to be uh, via our social media. So if you're on Facebook or Instagram, you can message mm -hmm. us, you can email us, you can message us through Google, uh, you know, We'll get those messages, and uh, if there's anything that you are looking for, need recommendations or suggestions on, uh, we can definitely uh, help you out with that. Uh, continue to like, subscribe, and share. If you are enjoying any of our content, uh, that is the most important thing. Listen, if you're in a position or not, you know, not in the position to help us by making a purchases, it, sharing what you like about the store or sharing our podcast, sharing any of our posts from Instagram or Facebook, Facebook especially, because that allows it to reach more people. And the more people that see it, maybe somebody will be interested in said item that we have shared or talked about. Uh, and right now, let, listen, um, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to admit that uh, we're a small business and we're struggling. This second lockdown, I would probably say is worse than the first, uh, the, the first one. Um, and uh, we could use any and all support that you can throw our way. And again, continue. Uh, con I want to thank you for continually doing it to those people who are already and always doing it. So thanks, guys. Awesome. Uh, Rob, where can they find you? Well, when I'm not watching Interstellar, um, you can find me on, on Twitter and Instagram at Rob Gadet. Also on Mondays, uh, John and I are live on uh, Facebook. Uh, I think it's on Twitch as well, John. Um, and on our YouTube channel, we are doing the Heroes World Psychic. We are currently in the uh, best of the 80s action movie bracket. So I believe this is coming out. Uh, we're recording on Sunday. So it's coming out today. So tomorrow, join us live at 8 o'clock. We've narrowed down. We're in our second, uh, our second field now of... Uh, and we have a, a big matchup between Lethal Weapon 1 and Die Hard. So we'll, we'll see because I don't, everybody says Die Hard is the best action movie of the 80s, but is it really? Is it really? Or does it benefit from a yearly watch because people consider it a Christmas movie? So there's going to be a lot of discussions. <laughs> spoilers, so, it is. <laughs> so thank, <laughs> spoilers, it's not. So thanks to all of those who, who do watch us live and do who, who comment and who comment afterwards. So you can find us there tomorrow night, uh, 8 o'clock. Perfect. So again, Thank you everyone for uh, watching. Please comment below your thoughts on uh, Rob's chair. That's right. Uh, comment on <laughs> fancy, you, the fancy. video game of, of uh, Star Wars that you'd like to see. Comment below on your thoughts on uh, Guilty Pleasure. That's actually a guilty pleasure. Uh, <laughs> comment below on all your thoughts and, and your whether you want to continue watching WandaVision or who you'd be surprised to see in the Marvel Universe. Share with us. We we always listen. We always uh, comment back. We're we're trying. We'll engage uh, people back on the Discord. So thank you so much for joining us today. Be safe, y'all, and we'll see you all next week. Goodbye. Right. Thank you again, Stu. Bye. See you guys.